Most U.S. Ford Mustang Mach-E owners probably don't know this, but Ford actually rates the Mustang to be able to tow more than 3,000 pounds. But there's a catch. That tow rating only applies in Europe, not the United States. Now, since my Mach-E is the extended range all-wheel drive version, which in Europe would qualify for the maximum tow rating, I wanted to put it to the test here in the U.S. I wanted to find out if it could tow this electric Zero SRF. Now, altogether, my weight is about 1,100 pounds, give or take. This trailer is about 600 pounds, and the Zero before accessories is officially 498 pounds. So again, about 1,100 pounds roughly, or within five pounds of that probably. My draw tight aftermarket trailer hitch has a maximum rated tongue weight of 350 pounds and a maximum gross trailer weight of 3,500 pounds. Other manufacturers also make aftermarket hitches for the U.S. Mach-E, and U-Haul lists the Mach-E for towing on its U.S. website. Now, of course, I've got to do the obvious disclaimer here. Ford has not tow rated the Mach-E here in the United States. So I cannot recommend actually towing with it. In fact, despite these official photos from Ford of Europe showing a Mach-E towing a boat, Ford specifically says not to attempt towing in its U.S. owner's manual. Regardless of how this test turns out, it's not going to really be representative of what a lot of you would experience if you tried to tow with the Mustang Mach-E, because I live in Florida. It's a flat state, and we rarely see temperatures below 32 degrees. In fact, today, the weather is ideal for EVs. It's probably about 75 degrees out here right now. Now, I am going to run the AC at a cool 70 degrees as well to go ahead and put a load on the car that way. But keep in mind, if we were up in the mountains, regardless of what I show you, I'm sure the usage would be higher on the ascent. And if you were trying to tow, obviously, in cold weather, you'd have to multiply that out as well. But Hopefully, I'll at least get an idea of what I could do range-wise in gentle conditions. Now, by the way, I'm a novice at towing, so this is in no way meant to be a towing how-to video. There are many people much more knowledgeable than me that you can watch for safety tips on how to tow. Now, one of the pain points that I am not going to be experiencing during this test is unhitching to charge because as any experienced EV owner knows, unfortunately, the way America's charging network is set up, next to no chargers have been built that are pull-through. There are rare exceptions to this, but at least in the world of CCS chargers here on the East Coast, currently almost all of them are instead a pull-up style charger, which means you have to, in most cases, unhitch. All right, we've hit our first secondary road, so we're finally uh, getting a little bit more speed to see how things will go. Right now I'm doing 40 miles per hour in a speed limit area of 45, but I am going the speed of traffic. One quick uh, item of note that I think is kind of interesting, I'm already uh, getting a feel for what towing with one pedal driving is like, and so far, I would say when I let off the gas for traffic, that the stopping distance seems to be darn similar, if not the same, as it would be without the additional 1,100 pounds. So I'm kind of guessing that Ford somehow knows how to vary regenerative braking based on weight. So I've just passed my final traffic light to get onto a highway. Uh, I am now up to 55 miles per hour. Things seem to be going nicely. Right now, I am still averaging 3.1 kilowatts per hour, but that will probably now start to drop off now that I'm reaching higher speeds. Next, I'll be getting on to Interstate 295 here in Jacksonville, which is going to have a speed limit of 65 miles per hour. 
I'm now on I-295 here in Jacksonville, and I've just gotten on the Dames Point Bridge, which is the tallest bridge in Jacksonville. For river traffic, it's got a clearance of 175 feet, so I'm going to guess it probably has an automotive elevation of probably about 185 feet or so. So it's a fairly good climb, which you can see from the outside video to get to the top of the bridge. Uh, the trailer is tracking nicely. The car doesn't seem to be stressed in any way whatsoever. Uh, in fact, now that I'm at an interstate speed, it seems quite happy. It's just purring right along as we go up the bridge across the St. John's River. We're going to be going by the port of Jacksonville, which uh, is a very large automotive port here on the East Coast. A lot of cars are shipped into this port, including this Ford Mustang Mach-E, which was shipped into the port of Jacksonville from its point of assembly in Mexico. So next what I'm doing, I'm getting on a small secondary road. I keep going over some railroad tracks, again, just to get a good feel for what it's like to tow a motorcycle in various conditions as best I can. And then next what I'm going to do is pull into a parking lot, which will actually be somewhat representative of what I'd be going through if I were to pull over to charge. And I won't need to do that for this trip, and I'm not going to bother with the experience of un- hooking the trailer and charging and re-hooking the trailer. I mean, I've got a sense of what that's going to take, but what I don't have a sense of, and I'm going to play around in this brand new shopping center that's not open yet, is what it's like to back up, to go forward and backwards and park a trailer. You know, because that's the kind of situation that I will be facing on the road, and I most likely will have to go ahead and park the darn trailer in a spot away from a charging station. So I might as well get used to the idea and see what it's like. So first off, if I'm lucky enough to be able to pull through, parking will be a breeze. I can already see that. And yeah, it's going well. Pull through parking is nice and easy. And of course, all modern vehicles have backup cameras so I can see precisely how it's gonna line up in the spot, which is very nice. So my very first parking test went absolutely fine. Now what I'm going to do is do a little bit more challenging of a test. What I'm going to do is swing around and I'm going to assume that I have to back in to park. And I'm going to also assume that I'm going to be lucky enough to be able to park at the edge of lots where there isn't a lot of traffic. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Ah, so I can see right away that I have a bit to learn about parking, backup parking, because the trailer didn't at all align the way I thought it would. See, I am a newbie. I am learning. So I'm very happy that I was able to find a, a lot that's not in use yet to do a little practicing here. I got to tell you, much respect to truckers, much respect to people that used to tow before the days of backup cameras. I don't know how they did it. I can't imagine trying to do this without a backup camera. All right, I've completed my parking test. Definitely quite the trick to try to back into a spot. I'm sure I could get the hang of it if I did it enough. Of course, my goal would be in try to avoid that situation but we all know that not every situation can be avoided so best to sort of get a sense of it so i'm back on the interstate and i've got two trip mileage uh, readings going one is from the start of the trip back in the city and the other is from just getting on the interstate so looking at interstate only travel so far i am pulling between 1.7 and 1.8 kilowatt watt hours per mile currently and I am uh, doing between 60 and 65 I'm in a construction zone so uh, I am seeing the reduction that I expected now here's one quick interesting test that's specific to the Mach-E in towing. I have turned on Blue Cruise just to see if Ford would even allow it to engage with towing, and it has, and it seems to be working correctly 
obviously I'm keeping an extremely close eye on it. I would never trust Blue Cruise while towing. So I'm coming up to uh, what I would call my first real curve since activating Blue Cruise. And of course I'm uh, going to be ready to resume control, but we are coming up to a nice curve, so I'll be curious to see how it handles it. And it's starting to take the curve. It's working exactly as it normally would. There is a car that is merging in front of me, and Blue Cruise is adjusting as I would expect it to for the traffic. So uh, I can tell you that it doesn't seem to be impacted in any way by towing. Okay, I've just pulled in back home. I went, let's see here, a total of 76.2 miles for the trip. For the entire trip, the Mach-E indicates that I averaged three miles per kilowatt hour. Now, if I look at the interstate version of this, which did also include some urban on the way back, it says I did 1.9 kilowatts for the average uh, and went 62.1 miles. Since the weather and inclines were just about perfect, let's knock that average down to 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. Given the Mach-E all-wheel drive extended range has a usable battery size of 91 kilowatt hours, that works out to a range of about 155 miles. To put that in perspective, my average range without towing has been 273 miles per charge over more than 4,600 miles of driving. Now, most of us don't charge much beyond 80% after that first charge of the day when traveling. And as every EV driver knows, DC fast chargers aren't always where you want them. So personally, I'd count on looking for my next charge every 100 miles if I were towing 1,100 pounds. And that, in a nutshell, is my best guess as to why Ford didn't give the Mach-E a U.S. tow rating. The range hit is pretty severe, but from a powertrain and structural standpoint, it seemed to handle the weight just fine. So now you know. The Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive extended range is certainly capable of towing light loads of 1,100 pounds or less, despite the fact that here in the United States, it hasn't received a tow rating. If you found this episode of EV Rider useful, I hope you'll give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can bring you more adventures in EV motoring, whether it's cars or motorcycles.